every single minute, 500 hours of video is uploaded to YouTube. Yet at the top, some of the world's biggest creators are quitting, crying, being cancelled. But despite this, there are still 113 million other channels of people giving everything to try and make it big. That is the world's most dangerous prison. And that may just end up screaming into the void and then make that car disappear. My name is Daniel Howell, a comedian and recovering YouTuber with six million subscribers that has seen it all and barely survived to tell the story. Hello, Internet. I am bravely going to actually leave the house. Hi, do you like your job? To spend time with YouTube creators hustling to chase the dream. But well, there's no, like, guarantee this is ever going to work. But if you give up, you know it won't to those living that very dream. It was that real-time success. You see your views every day, every hour, you're getting more and more, more subscribers, more views, more revenue. And we'll be revealing exclusive data showing the challenges facing creators, asking if this is a viable career, and showing the cost of being a YouTuber. Year is 2005. A little website called YouTube.com appears on the World Wide Web where some bored, lonely people, such as my younger self, this is my first proper video, I guess, decide to upload little movies that they've made, comedy sketches, video blogs about their everyday lives, just for the fun of it. Then within a year, this website gets bought by Google for $1.6 billion the biggest purchase they had ever made. In come the advertisers, and with it, the opportunity to turn your hobby into a career that gives you a monthly paycheck. Suddenly, every million views brings thousands of dollars, and before you know it, these cats, pranksters, and wannabe entertainers have mansions, hordes of loyal followers. <laughs> It is easy to understand why being a YouTuber is one of the most desired jobs in the country. I mean, film yourself talking, click upload, and then wait for the money to roll in. But is it that simple? Even when you make it to the top, the success can be short-lived. The average top 10 creators only stay there for three years. So is the sacrifice required to break through and the pressure to keep it up and live in the public eye too much to handle? After a decade of constantly creating content, I decided that I had to get out. I was legitimately living with chronic stress. I spent every waking hour working out of sheer terror and had no life. But this was the life I signed up for. I had had enough of the loner lifestyle. The endless creative grind was taking a toll on my mental health. But for many aspiring creators, the dream is still alive. One YouTuber who has experienced the meteoric rise is magician Dan Rhodes. Dan rode the wave of the recent YouTube Shorts format, YouTube's answer to TikTok. Our exclusive data showed it takes the average UK top 10 YouTuber over three years to reach the fabled million subscribers milestone. Dan did this in one month. Now he has over 23 million subscribers and counting. You are about to be the biggest YouTuber that the UK has ever had. I lost all my humbleness after I hit 20 mil. I mean, deep down, if you ask me what I am, I'd just say I'm a magician. So I had to like adapt my magic videos to work for TikTok mm -hmm. during lockdown when you couldn't leave the house. Mm -hmm. I was ticking the talk every day. And then when YouTube Shorts came out, I had so many TikToks to post. So I just posted all them on bam, YouTube bam. Shorts. It was just the right content at the right time. And people, I think, they love momentum. Uh -huh. And if someone's watching content, they've got another one to watch, another one to watch. And uh, YouTube's algorithm must have thought, wow, this guy's an animal. He's posting 10 new vids a day. Let's blow some minds then. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you legitimately want me to film this for yes, you? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. He's recording. As I attempt to hold a squat to film something that will probably have more views than the King's Coronation, I am struck that one of the world's most famous entertainers has no one around to help him create his content. <sighs> I've never had more stress in my entire life. If you're saying I'm no longer doing lockdown magic in the room, I'm going to go out on the streets, you need a team. You know that after today, I'm not going to be here to be your permanent cameraman. What? <laughs> Daniel, I thought it was you. <laughs> What are your most viewed videos? Uh, half a million. I mean, half a billion. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, not half a million. Yeah, no. Half a billion, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's my most viewed. A regular YouTube video, a million views can be like one to 5,000, give or take, depending on the ads. Yeah. So if you got half a billion views on a normal YouTube video, 
that would be two million pounds. But on YouTube Shorts, you earn less and you'd make... Maybe like 10 to 20,000. The way I see YouTube Shorts, I think they're a great tool to reel in new audience. Mm -hmm. And I think what the long form is, where your bread and butter is, where you build that audience and where you make the ad revenue. I think for the next year, my goal is to like hire an assistant and an editor mm. and a, a cameraman. So yeah, that's the goal. Could you pick a card? Have a look at it, show the camera. Have a look at it. Let's shuffle them inside the pack. Turn it around. <laughs> Was that your card? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Now look, it should turn into the four of diamonds. Despite working alone, Dan has achieved over 16 billion views, making him the second most viewed YouTuber ever in the UK within the space of only three years. Dan is proof that to make it on YouTube, you need to be a Swiss army knife of different skills. A performer, a camera operator, a video editor, handle your own marketing and PR, and have a mindset that is able to survive the grind. But only 0.003% of channels on YouTube have over a million subscribers, and YouTube told us just 1.3 thousand in the UK. So, there is no promise that you will be the next Dan. Howell. I meant me, not damn Rhodes, damn it. With this in mind, I went to meet two YouTubers hustling to break through. Ellie Marie TV. I'm going to sell this napkin for $10,000. And Dara Tarr. I'm going. Who are willing to do almost anything to blow up on YouTube. Hi. Hello. <laughs> this isn't my house, but come in. So no offense, why are you all here? How did you meet? Oh. We, we met oh, very we weird. Met. <laughs> so he lived 40 minutes away from me, but we didn't meet until we were in America. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he showed up to my place trying to kidnap somebody. Consensually. This was the moment. I feel like it's definitely become harder to be a YouTuber nowadays because there's so much competition. Mm -hmm. So like working together, it makes things just easier. Even from yeah. like expenses, like the fact your girlfriend's letting me stay in her living room. Yeah. So that helps a lot too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what are you doing today then? This morning we've got to find someone's alien son. Sure. In the afternoon, I'm pretending to be a dead body and getting thrown <laughs> into a river. Oh, you're the you're the corpse. Um, oh, love it. In the evening, I'm gonna try and go to Hogwarts by sprinting at a wall. Previously on Ellie Marie TV, Ellie interviewed a woman who genuinely claims to have been abducted by aliens. And his, his feet went out like that, around, around the chair, and I thought, that's weird. And has an adult alien son living on this random street in Fleet. Now, Ellie is going to that street to actually try and find him for the content. So I guess we're going with her. So is it going to be door knocking? Yeah. Have you seen someone's alien son? Yeah. Hey, silly. All right, good luck. <laughs> OK, guys, so... Oh, this is giving me alien vibes. Are you the alien? Yeah. No? Yeah. No? Oh, he's definitely the alien. I mean, how much of this is going to end up in it? This will probably be about 20 seconds of the video. <laughs> yeah. Some days, though, you could be filming an entire day and it's a minute of the video. It's clear that Ellie has to push herself and her content to the limit to cut through on the platform and be accepted, as when we looked at the data, it shows only a quarter of the UK's top 20 creators are female. Do you feel like there is an expectation to make a certain kind of content just because of your gender? I get told this a lot, but I think I'm one of the few girls in my niche of content, I guess. Mm. There's not many, like, extreme entertainment women on the platform, but I'm hoping that times will change. <laughs> yeah. Is your family like, you need a plan B, you're spending too much time on this YouTube thing? Before this, all I was doing was McDonald's, so mm. if anything, it's a step up. <laughs> Is it better than when you just worked at McDonald's? Um, I guess I'm earning more, but I'm spending it all. That's the issue, because it's yeah. like a business almost. So it's like everything coming in is going straight back going out. Going straight back into the content. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not really earning anything right now as a human. My channel was growing, mm -hmm. and now it's not. It's kind of receding. The risks I've taken, like some of the videos took six months. Looked very good, looked like the video had potential, could blow up. Collaborations with people that then just flopped. And it's like a whole half a year of your life is down the drain. Plus, like I was living on a cot, living on a sofa, living in a closet, just putting myself more and more in debt. 
to hopefully get that peak that I've seen other creators around me have hit, like a lot of my close friends, you know, they put themselves in similar situations and blew up, but it's not happened yet. And it's, it's the, it's kind of high risk, high reward, but the high risks have been taken have been failing. <laughs> it's just a lot of pressure. Cause it's like, all right, you're negative in the bank. The channel's not doing great not taking a break, not seeing family. It's like every day you're just waking up and having to like carry it on and push it more. But there's no like, there's no light at the end of the tunnel, I suppose. That sounds really dark, but there's no like guarantee this is ever gonna work. But if you give up, you know it won't. It's clear Ellie is working 24 seven to grow her channel. And it's difficult to hear how tough and financially unrewarding she is finding it with her earning only 4,000 pounds from views on her channel in the last year. 10 years ago, there were two British YouTubers in the global top 20. Today, there are zero. I remember when I started and often wondered if the grind would be worth it when one day I finally make it. But the reality is, even if you do, the work doesn't stop. If anything, there's an even greater pressure to keep it up. We found that on average, the top 10 YouTubers in the UK had already been active for 11 years. I worry that at this rate, Ellie is gonna burn out long before she gets there. And now we are... Uh, now we have to turn Ellie into a dead body. Yeah. And we have to call an Uber. And um, see, will the Uber driver literally help me pick up what looks like a dead body and move it into his boot? I couldn't help being concerned that in the pursuit of a banger, they were perhaps blind to the reality of what they were actually about to attempt. Because a, 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 a trash bag is, you can't breathe in that. Uh, no. At least they're having fun. I'm not here. Yeah, happy with the plan and the ethical ramifications. Uh, I'm putting a lot of faith in Dara here, but I trust him. Anything to make it on YouTube, man. <laughs> Scream. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, we decided to distance ourselves from the scene before it hit the fan, but I wonder what happens. Sorry? Is there one person? No, no, no. The, uh... I can be No, 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 don't worry, it's not. It's... No, I can't do. No? I can't do. How... This is a human. This is not a human. This is just <laughs> my dead body. Hey, congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly looking at it on paper, does this job sound that appealing or even possible? I have whipped up the job description of a YouTuber. A zero hours contract, working in complete isolation, revealing every intimate detail of your life to be commented on that after the trial period of several years could make you a millionaire or amount to nothing at all. So who wants to apply? Hi, do you like your job? Do you want a better job where you can earn more money? Do you want to make millions of pounds? Do you want to be rich and famous? Yeah. I got him. All right, OK, so this is a job. It is remote working. OK, yeah. You get to be your own boss. Oh, love that. You get to do what you want, when you want. OK. You could make millions of pounds. Oh. Could make millions of pounds. OK. It requires a small initial investment of several thousand pounds into technology. I am out. Would yeah. you be willing to do, like, five, ten people's jobs but only earn the money of, like, one job? But would you be willing to maybe sacrifice five, ten years of your life opportunities and then flop at the end of it? Yeah, maybe, because yeah. you can always start again. You can always start fresh. You... But you will be criticised by random strangers at any moment. <laughs> Based on that, do you think it's like a fair application? No. Um, that sounds pretty shit. Well, there you go, having to master the skills for six different jobs and put in the hours for all of them with no promise of a paycheck does not seem that appealing. Combined with the endless pressure and criticisms, no wonder our findings show YouTubers only remain in the top 10 for three years before dropping out. It's a recipe for disaster. Is it possible to avoid the burnout? Well, what if you're not alone? YouTube supergroup, The Sidemen, whose videos have over 12 billion views and have been valued at up to 170 million pounds, upload a piece of content every single day. I am gonna meet Jordan, the co-founder of Arcade Media and manager of The Sidemen. It's my blowing. <laughs> who's gonna show me the secret of the military operation behind Britain's biggest YouTubers. 
YouTube supergroup The Sidemen, whose videos have over 12 billion views and have been valued at up to 170 million pounds, upload a piece of content every single day. I am sad and annoyed that I... So what's their secret? I went to meet Jordan, the co-founder of Arcade Media and manager of the Sidemen, to witness the scale of the industrial content machine that he thinks is the answer to beating burnout and staying at the top. Hi, what are you going for? You. Thank you, likewise. And hey there, how are you guys? Uh, and this is Victor, he's our new MD. He's been, hey, yeah, doing? he's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, a real yeah. handshake. Though. And this is like a snapshot. I mean, it's, yeah, probably, what, four of, I'd say, 20. It's mind-blowing. <laughs> Wait to see the studio. Terrifying. Wait to see the studio. OK. Well, welcome to uh, the Sidemen HQ, as it is right now. Over here, we start every week. And we get on this, we punch a clock that goes 1 hour 15. We shoot and record. But no restaurants. He eats on his own. No, nah, time has been. <laughs> So this moves off, and then they go over here, and there's another clock that starts, and that's 20 minutes, and that's Ask the Sidemen. And once they do 20 minutes there, we move right over to Find Our Fucked, and then we run a 25-minute timer on this one. Before I get too attached. What? I'd be gassed if I wasn't allowed to meet her. Yeah. Catching this at its worst state, because yeah, the boys... Yeah, I was to say, this is simultaneously the best set, and also there <laughs> is a glory hole. Once a month, we gather to do our, our big shoot. Will this work? Oh, shut up. Wow. For God's sake. Uh, that, that's the thing? No, he's just down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Hands up for Katy Perry. I think yeah. you. And it's gotten quite big. I mean, yeah. how many channels, followers, views, what are you on now? So, 244 million followers across everything. That Casual. includes all the different brands. 80 million plus on the main channel. Nearly eight more Sidemen. It goes up literally by the day. In December, we made 186 video pieces. I mean, each video will have, what, eight to 10 mil a week? Yeah, I mean, like, if something is a banger, you're hitting a mil within the hour. Yeah. And it's also not just content. No. Because you guys also have diverged into a lot of businesses yeah. as well. So we've got XX Vodka. Uh, side cards, but we have sides, which is a fried chicken brand. We have a side plus, obviously, a membership club. We're looking to launch a hotel. Uh, we have a number of other projects that we probably can't talk about yet. The boys always had a goal and a dream. Mm -hmm. Well, we came in and helped with structure. So if you take an average week, you will have four different departments working on different things connected to the same video. One being the production team that literally goes out to all these places that just came back from Tokyo, literally roam the following day. But on the back, we have uh, key editors, and they sit in Wales, America. We have two people in the UK, and then we have one down in the Netherlands, and then one in Norway. How you stop YouTubers from having the inevitable breakdowns that hit them at the end of their road after doing it for so long. For us, our whole job is to try and give them as much space and as much time to be creative, to be the creators that they are while automating everything behind the scenes. If you manage to build a community, even if it's small, if you're willing to invest a little bit of money to help you out with edits and you get a really good editor on it, then that will take away so much of your uh, structural and admin work on the edit that you can start thinking about your next step. Looking at the scale of the Sidemen operation, it is hard to imagine how creators like Ellie and Dara could ever hope to have this much support and avoid the inevitable burnout. A big team comes with a big price tag, but for Arcade, it's just an investment in the Sidemen brand. We can estimate what a YouTuber earns from views for the Sidemen channels reportedly over seven million pounds a year, but what we can't know is the value of sponsored posts, merch, live events. And it is clear that the biggest financial opportunities for YouTubers are actually off platform. So is money the answer? Nothing stops you from living forever if you can hire a huge team to help? Well, not according to Vic. Vic is an active member of the Sidemen squad and has his own very successful gaming channel with over 7.6 million subscribers. And what a beautiful thing we have to show for it. This thing is hefty, it's beautiful. But now, 15 years on, he is struggling to find the motivation to post on his own channel, having only uploaded four times in the last year. So what's stopping him? He invited me to his humble home studio. Just had to make it past his security first. Be honest, at any point, have you had enough people to fill the space? Um, no, no, not really. So the office is up here, hidden away. All right, come on in. Vic uploaded every single day, sometimes multiple videos a day, for seven and a half years from 2010 to 2018. I needed to know how that was humanly possible. 
We lived in a house together, the Sidemen house, me, KSI, Zerka, Mini Minter, and they would sometimes go multiple days without seeing me. <laughs> I would be up until like 7 a.m. in my room making videos. I used to go to the petrol station mm -hmm. and grab sandwiches and like little pasta pots. I used to put them in a fridge in my room and that would mean I could work more. I didn't even have to leave my room to eat. It was that real time success. You see your views every day, every hour, you're getting more and more, more subscribers, more views, more revenue. It took probably seven or eight years for me to step back and think, okay, when is enough <laughs> views is going to be here? enough? When am I really enjoying making the content or am I just making it just to get more views, but more views for what? Actually, a big turning point for me was when I broke this collarbone, which has its big metal plate in it. Oh yeah, nice. I did that while vlogging. Oh so cool, that was, yeah, uh, anything for I the content. What were you jump, doing? A ski, a ski jump, jump with a GoPro obviously, and this of course I'm not good. I'm not in a I've vlogged myself in the hospital. I'm sat there and I'm just like, I'm miserable. I'm just like, well, guys, be careful. Don't, don't do what I did. Ouch. So now I got hospital bed for the night, ate some banging lasagna. But it was a big wake up call of just like, okay, that wasn't a really bad fall. And I've severely damaged my body from that. Mm. And it was like this like mental thing of, you are, you are weak, you are fragile, you are not healthy. Mm -hmm. Let's start to change things up. So that's when I started to share less of my life because I spent so many hours on camera, live broadcasting, presenting myself. I'm actually kind of enjoying more now, taking time away from the camera. If it was just you, do you think you could keep going? Or if there was no side men, do you feel like you've had your run and you'd now go all in on DJing? It's the latter, yeah. If it was just me on my own, I don't think I would be creating content. At the moment, I'm trying to kind of transition into music in that I've been doing a little bit of DJ. I've got my decks over there. Yeah. And I'm really enjoying the kind of creative process. And I think it would be really nice to share that, but also I don't think a mass audience would be interested in it. So you, you can have four channels. I've just yep. got two set up. So this is simple, that's just a volume mixer. Vic has gone from one extreme to the other, from uploading every single twist and turn of his life onto his channel to uploading nothing at all. Many creators feel that YouTube freezes them in time. The person or persona that they were when they hit that first million probably isn't who they are 10 years later. There's a 60% chance I'm gonna be fine. When a creator feels they've outgrown the content that their audience loves them for, it's hard to keep hitting the upload button. We aren't all authentic all of the time, and yet so many top YouTubers decide to disappear rather than force themselves to appear as someone that they're not. How can you have done all of this up to this point yeah. and be this big and actually feel so strongly about just not being authentic that you don't want to do it? From the outset, it's like you can make loads of money playing video games. Why are you not doing it? Yeah, it's when it's been so many years, it's really difficult to understand from an outside perspective. I understand. After nearly 10 years of making comedy videos on my channel, I suddenly disappeared. Behind the scenes, I was having a crisis of authenticity, my sexuality. I felt like a fraud. This started to take a toll on my creativity until I hit a wall. I couldn't create any more until I overcame this obstacle. <laughs> a year later, I returned with a 45 minute long video essay, basically, I'm gay. The only thing that isn't cool is telling other people what they should or should not identify as, because that ain't your problem or your business. It's clear from what we've discovered that to become a top creator on arguably the world's most popular platform, it requires not just a one in a million talent or mastering all of the skills and committing to the grind, but a lot of luck, a perhaps abnormal mindset capable of surviving the pressure and a plan to have the support to make it sustainable. YouTube is a brutal industry of impossible competition and unknowable algorithm controlling your fate. And chances are you won't make YouTube your career for your whole life. But I know it is still one of the only places in the world where you can truly broadcast yourself, create on your own terms and make your job your passion. When you see prime hydration flying off the shelves, Amelia de Moldenberg at the Oscars or some guy moaning about his self-esteem on a stage, that is where YouTube can take you, but it will always still be there. 
And for me and many others, hopefully now with some balance and boundaries, always be a home. The cost of being a YouTuber may be high, but as Ellie said, high risk, high reward. The only way to find out is to click that upload button.